Welcome back, campers. Today we are starting chapter three, uh, and we're going to be looking at, um, or starting to look at the second major topic in, in calculus. Uh, and this is a pretty big one. Like this concept is not going to go away um, through the rest of your calculus or mathematical career. So derivatives are really important. All right. So derivative and the tangent line problem. So tangent, hmm, that word right there, that's, you've seen that before, uh, probably a couple of times. So one, the tangent can function, so tangent of theta, um, the graph of it, uh, da, 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 yeah, all that trick stuff with it. And then the second definition is tangent to a circle. So line L is tangent to a circle if at a point P, uh, if F passes through P and is perpendicular to the radius uh, at P. So it just sort of kind of hits the curve or hits the circle once and kind of balances right there. So the second definition is closer to what we're wanting to look at. We're not talking about the tangent function. We're talking about just like the geometry definition of tangent. So it's possible to be tangent to a circle, but is it possible to be tangent to a curve? Well, the short answer is yes, so let's see what that means. So it means that at the point of intersection between the line and the curve, they're changing at the same rate. Or in other words, they have the same slope. So the slope of the line and the slope of the curve uh, are exactly the same, which is really weird because now it's like, a, wait, a curve has a slope? Uh, well, yeah. Lines change at constant rates while curves change at different rates. That's why they curve around. Uh, but they still change, which means they still have a slope. And it's this slope that we're after. Uh, so a major section of calculus is the study of change, which means that this slope is pretty important. So let's see what it looks like. So we can take any curve. Let's just take an upside down parabola. And we can look at any point on it. And we can find the slope of the curve at that point. And it would have the same slope as the line that it was tangent to. So it goes like that. So it kind of looks like it does for the circle. It's just on a curve instead of a circle. Well, let's look at a different curve and see how it affects it. So let's look at one like that. And again, these are just arbitrary curves. Like it doesn't matter what I draw or what curve I draw. Let's look at two points on this one. So let's look at this one at that point and this one over here. So the slope of the curve at this first point would be kind of like that, it's kind of missed. That's all right, we'll just make a bigger dot. And then this one would have a slope going like this, or its tangent line would be going like that. So if you knew the slope of the line, so the slope of the green lines, at that point of intersection, you would know the slope of the curve. But we only have one point. So how do you find the slope of a line through one point? Uh, well, you have to start with what you know and go from there. Normally, like if you want the slope of a line, to calculate it, you would need two points. So we're gonna start with just that. So we're gonna let f be a function that intersects the line L uh, at the point x, f of x. So right there, so that would be x. So there's a second intersection point, so right here, uh, that is a little further out uh, from x. So let's kick that x value over a distance of h. So we're adding a, a value of h to x and it kicks it out this way. So the second point, this one up here, is at x plus h comma f of x plus h. So 
So now you have two points to work with, which means you can get the slope of that line. It's just gonna look a little weird. So just use the slope formula. Uh, so we'll make this the x2 and y2, and this will be the x1 and y1. So f of x plus h minus f of x uh, over the x2 is x plus h minus the x1 is just x. And we get this weird looking mess. Like, oh gosh. But the denominator simplifies out. So it doesn't look quite as intimidating. So the denominator goes to that. Now, if you took pre-calculus or Math 370 uh, with me or another instructor, you have definitely seen this before. So anyway, we'll come back to that. So here's the slope of the line. So let's start sliding that second point towards the first. So we're gonna start sliding this point here. We're gonna start sliding it down the curve towards this one. So what would eventually happen? Well, the two points would merge or they would join together or they would run into each other. And what is happening to this H value as this point starts to slide down the curve? So as this point starts to slide down, your X value of this point is getting closer and closer to that X. So what's happening to the H? Well, H is getting smaller, or in other words, H is approaching zero. And what did we use before when something started, appro started to approach something? Limits. So thus, you've now constructed a method to find the slope of a tangent line at one point. So this is the overall slope but we're going to let h approach zero to get that point to slide down. And when we do that, that line is going to start to tilt until it becomes an actual tangent line. So the slope of the line at that one point is going to equal the limit as h approaches zero of this little slope formula we just came up with. f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So from math 370 or pre-calculus, this was a, just this. This was a difference quotient that we worked with. Uh, and that's why we worked with it, because it's going to come back and be used in these derivative problems. So I'll stop the video here, and then we'll keep going with some actual examples to see how to calculate something or something like this out.